Hello beautiful people, I love it here, this is home. We're here to continue with our projects of preserving the cultural heritage around medicinal plants. My background is in international banking and finance law. A lot of my friends think I'm mad. For them, it's a completely irrational thing that I'm doing. <laughs> From 2000, I had like this illness that affects women around menstrual and digestive health. But I traveled to my own home ground, Sotik, in 2017. I was in so much pain that actually this woman noticed. And she just said to me, I'm going to bring medicine that's going to help you with that. And I laughed, but I was curious. So she brought this medicine and then I boiled it. And literally for the first time in 17 years, I had a painless period. So I brought more, I boiled them, I used them, I gave them to my friend. So my friend was on her way to a hysterectomy. I told her, oh, just try this. That was the end of that hysterectomy story. And then she told other people about the dawa. <laughs> Skin disease. Skin disease. We saw it. We saw it. I started developing the project, first of all, just for myself. The other people started asking me, what are the contents? And I had to now say, okay, let me go do some research and find out. This one, if it's the one, it's okay. It smells exactly like it. It's huge. When I found out the names in English and then the names in Latin, I'm able to Google. So that's how my research started. Can, you can see all the trees. Or you can see some of, like, you know. It's beautiful. That is when my product was tested. I got back a report saying what they are used for and the fact that my concussion, whatever you call it, is safe. Okay, it's a blood purifier. Yeah. From there, they sent me to the Ministry of Culture. Now I was officially a certified herbal practitioner. After doing that, I was allowed to advertise widely. So I did a video. Then the video went viral. I've developed products for men and for women, but this specific one is for women. Our rate and other herbs is actually a cumulative set of herbs. That's how my journey then, you know, started to really solidify. You see, others are saying, deliver, can, can you deliver? Zaituni, after how many bottles? We built up like a platform of 5,000 followers on Harriet's Botanicals. Now it's a real business. Hello, this is Harriet's Botanicals. And you were telling me you had some fibroids? Yes, I have them. So now I started thinking like a financier. What does this need? I started wondering, why is it that African herbal medicine isn't given the same kind of platform like everybody else's medicine? And this is what I call mainstreaming it. These are really more homegrown investments because remember, the trees are ours, the land is ours, the medicine is ours, the formulation is ours. And we need to monetize it in a way that benefits us. Orgelai. <laughs> They have their herbs and they know that their herbs will always end up on the shelf. That money will get back to them to preserve the environment and to continue building their lives. High blood pressure. High blood pressure. So what I'm trying to create really is a circular economy. You become connected to all these different things, connected to the environment, connected to the people who preserve, connected to your grandparents, connected to your customers. And that's what I call being rooted, being rooted in your ancestry. We're also like trees. We need something to anchor us. And culture always anchors us. And as somebody says, when everything else goes wrong, we always go home. So going home is a form of saying, I'm going back to my roots. <laughs> 